When discussing GPU programming, the algorithm that always pops up is matrix multiplication. During this operation, we take the row vector of one input matrix and take its dot product with a column vector of the second input matrix to produce one element of our output matrix. This has a very good three-dimensional representation. Here we can clearly see what vectors of each input matrix is correspond to each entry in the output matrix, and how we can calculate its dot product. The naive way to do this on a GPU, that we discussed in one of the first episodes of the GPU programming series, had each output element calculated by one thread. So, thread 0 would calculate the element at row 0, column 0, thread 1 would calculate the element at row 0, column 1, etc. Our input matrices tend to be very big. To optimize it, we split our matrices into tiles. We talked about the motivation for doing this in an episode on matrix tiling. So if you want a refresher on this, you can go back to that video. But long story short, it helps us move the data to faster memory and reuse it across all threads. This pattern of memory access is used across all highly performant matrix multiplication algorithms. So it became very important. In fact, so important that we have a specialized hardware unit for it. This is what tensor cores are designed to do. They are given three matrices as input, two matrices that we want to multiply, and an accumulator containing the result of a previous tiled matrix multiplication. And on this data, they perform another tiled matrix operation. Previously, each thread was calculating one element of the output matrix. In here, the whole warp is working in synchronization to produce one output tile. We can then launch as many warps as there are output tiles in the output matrix to perform a matrix multiplication on our whole matrix using tensor cores. When programming tensor cores, we first need to specify the shapes of our input and output matrices. Those are referred to as M, N and K. M is the common dimension between matrix A and our accumulator, and N is shared between matrix B and the accumulator. K is the dimension that is the same between both our input matrices. Our tensor cores can operate on three different shapes, assuming that we are using half precision. 16 by 16 by 16, 32 by 8 by 16, or 8 by 32 by 16. For this example, we'll set all sides of our matrices to 16. First, we need to initialize our accumulator to zeros. Then, after performing a boundary check, we load matrix A and matrix B from global memory to registers. We then perform a tensor core tiled matrix multiplication and store the result in our accumulator. We then advance our pointer to the next tile, load our tiles from memory, and perform another tile matrix multiplication for the final result. If we were to graph the throughput that we are getting with tensor cores, we can see that just by utilizing tensor cores, we are getting an algorithm that's six times faster than our tiled kernel that we wrote a while back. But to be completely honest with you, if we zoom out on our graph, we can see that we are only slightly above 10% of what the hardware is capable of. In fact, we have not even reached the theoretical maximum of what the GPU can do without using tensor cores. But filling this gap will be a topic of future videos. This channel is ad free, and it's because I get occasional donations from people who enjoy this work and they are sufficient enough for me to buy all of the essential gear for making those videos. Huge thanks for them for doing so. If you want to become one of them, you can visit my Buy Me A Coffee page. 
If not, hey, you can always support me for free by subscribing, leaving a like, commenting and sharing this video with your friends. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.